Hey everybody, Jennifer Schaus here today, and we're coming to you live from Washington, D.C. Thanks for joining us in our webinar Wednesday series. Uh, this year in 2023, calendar year, uh, on 40 Wednesdays, we are covering the top 40 profiles of the major U.S. federal government contractors. It's every Wednesday, and we'll go in order um, of the contractors based on their revenue with the U.S. federal government. Uh, all of our webinars are complimentary and recorded. If you're looking for today's recording, you'll find it on our YouTube channel. The best way to get that alert is to sign up for our, um, to follow our YouTube channel. It won't cost you anything except three seconds of your time just to click on that link and follow the channel. If you're looking for the PowerPoint, uh, you can hop over to the uh, site slideshare.net and I think you can log in there with your LinkedIn profile. Uh, that will get you today's PowerPoint. Again, there's no charge for that. So we've got almost 600 um, recordings on our YouTube channel, and then the, all of the PowerPoints are on SlideShare as well. Uh, a quick blurb about us. We are based in downtown DC and work with established uh, government contractors, helping them navigate the federal market through uh, market analysis reports, as well as GSA scheduled services. Uh, we put on events, webinars, and conferences throughout the year, and we just had a big event on Monday uh, over at the Kennedy Center with almost 300 attendees. Uh, if you're signed up for our newsletter, uh, you'll find out about upcoming events, conferences, and webinars um, by subscribing to that. That is also complimentary. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got almost 600 webinars on our YouTube channel, a little bit over um, 5,500 subscribers. Our newsletter is growing at over 25,000 and 27,000 on LinkedIn. If in fact you are trying to reach federal government contractors, so the banks, the law firms, insurance companies, payroll, uh, we do offer advertising opportunities and sponsorship at our events. If you're interested, just send us an email to hello at jennifershouse.com and we'll send you our media kit. So speaking of sponsors, we do want to thank um, the various sponsors who have helped make this series possible. Uh, first, we want to thank our friends at Gov Events. They're the premier platform for posting events related to government and government contracting. You can find all of our webinars and our events on govevents.com, as well as recordings from our past uh, 500 plus webinars. We also want to thank Tom Johnson and his team at Set Aside Alert. They are the go-to publication for contracting opportunities for small, women-owned, veteran-owned, hub zone, and 8A firms. Visit setasidealert.com for more information. The Fairfax Economic Development Authority has an online calendar of events and webinars, and we want to thank them for posting our events and webinars on their calendar. The GovSpend FedMine uh, platform is the platform that we use for the data in this series, as well as I think the last two years they have provided data for us. So uh, the contracting data in the webinar, again, is provided by GovSpend and FedMine. Their vision is to be the leading trusted source of data, analytics, and insight for organizations buying and selling into the public sector. The FedMind Federal Solution integrates data from 18 federal data sources and sets and creates a single convenient database that places the key data points at your fingertips. GovSpend began as a spending and purchase order database specifically within the state, local, and education sector. Uh, today, the database includes contract opportunities within thousands of entities at federal, state, and local and education uh, organizations. Uh, with the acquisition of FedMine in 2021, uh, the combined platform um, now provides thousands of opportunities for government contractors. Uh, again, thank you to GovSpend and FedMine for providing the data in the webinar series this year and in previous years. The Virginia PTAC. The Virginia PTAC Procurement Technical Assistance Center at George Mason University offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling to established government contracting firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore services, review homework recommendations, register for live trainings, and find useful links to agencies and other self-directed learning. 
Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on your business location. One-on-one uh, -on -one counseling is, however, limited to eligible client companies. Okay. Uh, the Greater Reston Chamber of Commerce is holding their annual, the 11th annual um, Business to Government Matchmaking Conference. It will run on May 4th from 8 to 1. It's out in Reston. And if you use the link there, the nova b 2 grestonchamberorg that will get you to the uh, to the registration link for the expo, and we hope to see you there. Uh, GovCon Academy is the government contract industry's leading training provider for small businesses. They offer a comprehensive 25 course, it's 150 lessons training program for government contracting small business executives addressing every aspect leading to leading a small business to success. Uh, their program also includes hundreds of business tools and processes, marketing templates, sample proposal sections uh, that will accelerate your company's success. They also have an uh, ISO or ISO Quick Cert program, uh, provides easy, fast, and affordable path to ISO certification. Now we want to thank our friends over at Bidsby. They were with us on Monday night at the Kennedy Center as one of our sponsors, and we want to thank them for sponsoring this webinar series. Uh, do you want help winning government contracts? Bidspeed helps and you win. Opportunities from every federal, state, local, public source in the United States. Need to find a teaming partner, incumbent point of contact, expiring contracts, etc. What about a compliance matrix or proposal templates? Want a solution to win with your GSA schedule? Maybe an easier or better way? If you said yes, log in at bidspeed.com. They help, uh, they're an official partner of the US SBA 7J Management and Technical Assistance Program. Get started today at fedbidspeed.com. Last but not least, the Federal Business Council. Events are the ultimate engagement channel to bring government and industry together. 68% of government personnel report that they attend more than one event each year. That's huge, especially if you're looking for relationships in the government. FBC has worked with government and industry for 45 plus years to create gatherings where ideas are shared and to help government achieve its goals. This includes agency industry days, cybersecurity symposiums, technology expos, and offsite meetings. FBC provides full life cycle meeting, planning, and event management. With over 5,000 meetings under their belt, FBC has the experience systems and personnel to make your next event exceptional. Learn more at fbcinc.com. Okay, a little bit about today's, um, about the theories that we're running and, um, and the schedule for the year, which is pretty um, simple and straightforward. Again, today's webinar is recorded and complimentary. If you sign up to follow our YouTube channel, you'll get the alert as soon as this uh, webinar is uploaded. The PowerPoint can be found also on a complimentary site, slideshare.net. Here's our schedule. We've already, already covered the top six. Today we're on number seven, McKesson, a pharmaceutical company. And then we will uh, close out the year on November 15th, uh, also with another uh, pharma, GlaxoSmithKline. The only Wednesday that we're skipping is the week of July 4th, um, because I think July 4th falls on a Tuesday. So we're assuming that most people will be off, but this is a full schedule. If you wanna register, you can see the link at the top, which is highlighted, jenniferschouse.com, top. 40. Okay, uh, we're making the assumption that most people are on this call simply to learn about subcontracting with these um, major vendors. So uh, a couple tips here on uh, on subcontracting. Uh, obviously, you want to keep the FAR, the Federal Acquisition Regulations, and the DFARs if you're dealing with um, DFD uh, agencies and departments in mind. These are the rules and the policies on how to do business with the government or basically the rules that the government must follow uh, when they are making purchases. So uh, you wanna make sure that you are cognizant of any FAR flow down clauses. So uh, again, the FAR is gonna be um, encompassing all of government um, and then the DFARS is for uh, defense. So use those links to educate yourself about subcontracting policies and procedures uh, for both the FAR and the DFARS. Other complimentary webinars that we've got on subcontracting, we actually started a series with um, a pretty large, I think it was about three hour webinar on subcontracting with the primes where we covered these six various uh, sessions, anything from strategy to compliance. 
uh, as well as legal considerations. You've got the link there to the um, to the YouTube, uh, and then you can also get the the PowerPoint. We did a series in 2021 on subcontracting within all of the federal departments, where we looked at the major contractors, uh, and FedMind provided the data for that. There's about 15 webinars there. Uh, and then strategies for subcontracting. There's uh, a plethora there, everything from joint ventures to mentor protege to teaming agreements, legal considerations, um, strategies, uh, pretty much everything A to Z. You can find that on our website. Again, those are all complimentary. Best practices, uh, if you are going to reach out to McKesson or any other uh, prime contractor to be a sub, uh, identify what it is you do and do well. If you do a multitude of things that aren't related, pick one and stick to that, do it well, and be known for being the best in your industry at doing just that. Before you talk to these people, you want to do some serious homework. So you're going to find um, research opportunities where you are actually bringing something to the table. You know, do you have a unique skill sets, uh, certain certification? Do you have past performance or a relationship within the agency or department? Or do you have the lowest price for uh, the labor that's required for that particular RFP? Um, don't go to these companies and flap your flimsy uh, capability statement in front of them saying, how can you help me? You need to help yourself and do some homework. Um, so this is where the uh, Public websites come into play, SAM.gov, USA Spending, FPDS, or any of the other data aggregators that are out there. And we've mentioned quite a few um, as our sponsors and, um, and partners in this webinar series. As I mentioned, you want to do your homework. Um, everything from researching them on them, meaning these companies, on uh, any of the federal uh, websites, but also make sure you're signed up for Google Alerts. Are you getting their newsletter? Do you know what associations they belong to? Where are they speaking? What events are they attending? Get out there and shake their hands. Customize your capability statement for the specific RFP, the opportunity. Um, don't just, again, hand them a bland capability statement asking what they can do for you. You should be bringing an opportunity to them. Um, the first thing they're going to ask you to do is, or they're going to ask, have you registered on our website as a vendor? Make sure that you have done that and make sure that your registration is complete, that you've uploaded, if you have the opportunity to, a specific customized capability statement. If you're connecting with the small business liaison officers on LinkedIn or their program managers, uh, again, make sure you're doing it with a message and not just clicking to connect. Send them something specific. Okay, so, uh, and that was just kind of general advice regardless of who the vendor is, but today we're gonna to be talking about McKesson. They come in at number seven. A couple of unique things that we found in our research, thanks to our friends at FedMind GovSpend who put the data together. So some basic info, uh, you've got their website. Uh, it would behoove you to spend some time on that. Look at their mission statement, who's running the show, um, and, uh, and what areas are they focused on. You also want to be cognizant of their stock price. Obviously, um, we're not asking you to be um, to purchase or, or not purchase their stock, but just be aware of the fluctuations, what's happening in their sector, um, how does that impact the work that they do with the government. Um, as you can see, after 2020, their, their stock rose. Um, and it dipped a little around um, 2017, 18, and 19. It was fairly low. That was because they were involved in the opioid uh, crisis. So, again, some Google searches and uh, some homework would uh, make you aware of the this information. Um, and again, just have it as talking points. Um, if you do want to register to be a subcontractor or uh, to work with McKesson, there is the link that will get you right there. Uh, the profile on SAM is, uh, there's their UEI, which will be helpful to you as you do further um, investigation. They're headquartered in Texas, and they've got about, I think it's 90,000, 87 to 90,000 um, employees. Their LinkedIn information, um, we've got uh, almost half a million followers there for McKesson. They've listed, uh, I think, about 20,000 employees on LinkedIn. Uh, but I think that they have a lot more than that, according to um, their website. 
Here are some of the, um, the small business liaison officers uh, that sometimes will go by different names, supplier diversity. If you're looking at um, contract development or contract administration, they're probably dealing more with the paperwork. Um, but just uh, keep, in, keep in mind the, uh, the job titles that, uh, that you see. And again, uh, if you are going to invite them to connect, please do it with a message. Okay, so uh, the first piece that we always look at are their prime contracts on the civilian side, and then we'll look at the defense. On the civilian side, this is um, something that's unique that we didn't see in the first six contractors. So if you've been with us for the last um, six weeks and seven, including today, you'll notice that the first six contractors, the bulk of their work was with uh, defense department, uh, where we've got kind of the opposite uh, happening here. So most of the work is, um, is happening at the VA um, for uh, for McKesson, and um, and it's obviously uh, appears to be growing. 2023 is uh, again that's fiscal year, so that's not a full fiscal year complete because we are still in the midst of it. But if you look at the numbers from 2019, um, and you'll see um, an upward uh, trajectory there for their VA work. Um, CDC uh, is was really something to take a look at. Um, so if you notice there, they had about um, 230,000 in uh, fiscal year 2020, up to 1.5 million in 2021. Obviously that was due to the pandemic and COVID. Um, so they definitely benefited there. Um, their DOJ work is with the prison. So there you can probably make some assumptions, but it would behoove you to uh, kind of dig into that a little bit further, but they are most likely uh, providing medical um, treatment for uh, prisoners. Um, and that's, again, kind of self-explanatory with the federal prison systems, BOP. Again, uh, you probably want to dig a little further into that. Uh, there's a blip there with uh, the U.S. Marshals uh, in fiscal year 2022, but probably not enough that um, that would uh, would help anyone here that's looking for um, uh, subcontracting potentially. You could compete with them there for some work at U.S. Marshals because it is uh, a pretty low dollar amount. Um, let's move on now to, um, and let me just make one more point here. I think in 2021, we saw their um, fiscal year 2021, if you look at the totals, uh, 9.5 million, almost 9.6. Um, so a, a great year. Um, fiscal year 2022, 9.3, so still kind of in that same range, which um, obviously those have um, were, were big numbers compared to uh, 19 and 20. Uh, we'll see what happens in 2023. 2022 could still be uh, receiving some money from um, the pandemic, so it will be interesting to see what happens in 23 and 24. Okay, now we're going to look at defense, um, and what we've got here are um, Still decent numbers, but not uh, at the volume or the level that we saw on the civilian side. So DLA obviously is their their main target here. Fairly steady work um, over the fiscal years with no real spikes during the pandemic. So um, if you do meet all the requirements to do you know DOD work and you look at this contract and there is something uh, at play, then I would um, potentially pursue that because it's still a decent amount of money and seems to be fairly steady. Okay, and we look at the independent um, agencies here. Peace Corps, you can imagine, kind of like Bureau of Prisons, um, the, as the Peace Corps is probably sending people overseas, that uh, McKesson is probably jabbing them with um, something, some vaccination that they are uh, required to have to do work overseas. Um, not a ton of money and um, uh, looks like nothing really happened during, well, they actually yeah, lost money, we'll say kind of during that COVID 2021 because Peace Corps was probably not sending anybody out. Um, so just, um, yeah, keep an eye on those numbers again, nothing uh, nothing huge there, uh, which in a way could tell you that um, there could be work that um, you could compete for with them at, um, at Peace Corps or, or even um, Social Security Administration. I'm not not sure about that contract, um, but again, these are really just meant to be high-level overviews, and the homework is incumbent, incumbent upon you all to 
uh, to kind of run with. We look at the top uh, NAICS codes, the North American Industry Classification System. I don't think you're going to be surprised. We know pharma, the McKesson is involved, obviously, in um, the pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing. And as you can see, um, the uh, the best years for the pharmaceutical manufacturing are uh, fiscal year 22, 21, and 20, um, and seems to always be kind of growing and consistent. Um, they're also um, not doing bad in the uh, medicinal bot botanical manufacturing and um, a little bit on uh, in storage and um, surgical and uh, medical instrument manufacturing. So uh, this next slide here actually um, gives us, I think, a, a prettier picture and, and more concrete numbers to look at um, that more or less mirror what we saw on the last slide, but in greater detail. So as you can see, um, if we look at the, the top row here, the pharmaceutical prep and manufacturing, which is their main line of business, um, you are seeing growth from 2018 to 2022. They go from 6.2 to 9.3. That's huge. Um, where we did see a big spike in 2021, 2022 20, to 2021. Again, we'll see what happens in 2023. I'm not sure if these 2022 number, numbers are still kind of leftover money from the pandemic. Um, so keep an eye on that. And again, 2023 is incomplete because we are in the midst of that fiscal year. Um, and what else did I want to point out here? Um, the surgical... Row three, the surgical and uh, medical instrument manufacturing. So those are actual devices. If you look at 18 and 19 uh, over to um, 20, so we're looking at um, 2 to 2.6 to 285 um, million. And those are obviously big jumps. And then you look at 2021, that's, you know, an, another 100 and 15, 17 uh, million on top of that, um, then with a dip there in 2022. So look at the spikes. The reason we went back to 2018 is to um, ensure that you're not getting a, uh, that you are getting a clear picture and not just looking at the, the COVID contracting years where these medical companies um, are certainly going to see spikes based on uh, their main line of business. So. Um, again, as I think fiscal year 23 and 24 um, kind of play out, we'll see um, where those um, were those just anomalies because of the pandemic, or um, is that um, line of business actually growing? Is the government putting more money into uh, into these um, types of spendings? Uh, they've also got other computer-related services. Again, you'd have to drill down and look uh, into that, and you can just basically do some basic searching on. Um, your SAM.gov, FPDS, USA spending to cross-reference the 541519 with McKesson's uh, UEI code. Okay. Um, the contracts with the subcontracting requirement, these are contracts that are $750,000 or more. Um, and we are, uh, again, dividing these into civilian and defense. So on the civilian side, um, these are basically the same ones that we talked about before. So DOJ, this was, um, I'm going to guess um, what we're looking at here is primarily the Bureau of Prisons, as we saw in those earlier slides. So um, just look at the, the numbers that seem to be growing from 21 to 22. Again, we'll see how 2023 plays out. Uh, the VA, which was really um, uh, the bulk of where their business is. Um, seems to be growing as well uh, significantly. They went from in 2019, 6.4 up to last uh, fiscal year to um, eight. Uh, and that's a that's a big jump. So um, you probably want to find out what they're they're doing there specifically. HHS, that was CDC. Um, so you're going to see um, some spikes there. And in fact, a big one going from um, uh, 2020 to 2021 goes from uh, 73 million up to 301. That's uh, most likely um, COVID contracting dollars. Um, and then to 2022, uh, um, 301 to the 1.2 obviously is a huge spike as well. So you want to uh, kind of dig into those contracts a little further to find out 
um, what actually, um, what HHS, and I'm assuming those are CDC because of the earlier slide, um, that's what we're looking at. Okay, now on the defense side, uh, DLA again was kind of what we looked at uh, last time, and then the, the line below that is gonna be um, uh, Office of the Secretary. Again, you're gonna have to uh, dig a little further. These are just high level numbers, but um, you can see any kind of spikes and, and dips. Um, these are all kind of, you know, fairly close to each other, 995 million up to um, to the 1 billion, not not a huge um, jump, and then, uh, and then not a huge dip in 2021, and then uh, a little bit lower there in 2022 with um, DLA. Uh, again, this would, um, I'm curious to see how these will play out in the future fiscal years. The independent agencies, as we uh, looked at last time, Peace Corps, um, a little bit there in, uh, in 2019, nothing in 2020 because of COVID, same thing for 2021. Um, 2022, they're, they're back on the radar with some, some good numbers, and 2023 uh, is still in play. Um, GSA is listed here, uh, but no dollars, um, simply because they probably had some work going back maybe 2018 or earlier fiscal years. Okay, uh, and now we're gonna look at the agencies, HHS, that was CDC, um, and these are dollars obligated in the millions, uh, and then Defense Department, uh, that's gonna be the, uh, the DLA work. Again, you wanna dig into those a little bit further. These are high level overviews. Um, and now we'll look at the industry, and this is gonna mirror kind of those NAICS codes that we looked at. So you've got the surgical and medical instrument manufacturing, which is the bulk of the work and then uh, coming in at um, as software publishers, again, you'd have to dig in further um, to really understand what it is, um, what those contracts uh, entail. Obviously, they're going to be related to medical uh, software, but um, that is, and you'd have to really look at the statement of work and, and the details. The devil is in the details, and that is, uh, in fact, an, I think an accurate statement here. Uh, because you probably wouldn't normally think of McKesson as a software publisher. So again, uh, keep those things in mind. Uh, let's look at their subcontractors. So these are the subcontractors that are working with McKesson when McKesson has contracts that are valued at over 750K or above. Uh, UPS comes in at number one. Uh, you guys are all familiar with UPS. So just because um, a business is large does not mean that they cannot be a subcontractor. We always hear companies say, oh, I'd rather be a subcontractor than go direct. Well, you're still going to be competing with large companies and you're going to have far flow down clauses and everything else. So um, sometimes you may want to rethink what is your reasoning for being a subcontractor and make sure that you are, in fact, educated about what's required or not when you are a subcontractor. Uh, you've got Veterans Construction Incorporated. I uh, haven't done homework on them, so I'm not sure if they are, in fact, a large business or small. Um, this Cielo Inc., we did look up because they came in there twice. Um, one could be the parent company, the other could be the subsidiary. Um, and so it would uh, behoove you to, um, to kind of dig into these contracts as well, because oftentimes there is not just one subcontractor, there are tier two and three uh, subcontractors. So uh, keep that in mind, and these companies that you see here are uh, certainly in play as well, and they've got um, several million to, um, to uh, quote-unquote play with. Uh, the top five subcontracts reported, um, so these are um, in the past, and the column that's going to be most important here is the fourth from the uh, right-hand side. So you've got the Veterans Construction Inc., UPS, um, and then the CALO Inc. comes in at the, the bottom, um, but still a uh, decent amount of money. And um, these, again, are the, the top uh, dollar amounts. So just keep an eye on the fiscal year on these. Uh, this NSYNC Consulting, um, that goes back to August 17th, 2020, and um, Looks like it's uh, a little bit over 26 uh, million. Now we're looking at their expiring contracts um, that are valued at the 750K and above. So these are going to have the sub K requirement with them. Uh, these are not broken out by defense or civilian, but what's important here are 
uh, a couple things. The last three columns, in, in my opinion, are uh, in fact, uh, well, they're all important, but let's just talk about these. So if we just start with the first row, um, you wanna make sure that um, this McKesson that we're looking at is uh, going to be a subsidiary of the parent company. So make sure you've got the right UEI numbers you're doing further searching, or you could just kind of copy and paste that contract number into SAM to get further details. What is important here is these number of transactions and the total sales. So if we look at row one versus row three, um, these are vastly different um, contracts to be looking at simply because the total sales here are uh, the 997 million, so almost a billion, divided into four transactions. So those four transactions under that almost billion dollars were enormous. Uh, if you look at the third row, the 84 million divided into 445 uh, transactions, those are going to, you're going to have more opportunity there to compete. Um, row, the two rows down from that, that was just one transaction. That was just one big um, purchase. So the higher the number of transactions, the more um, kind of task orders underneath that, or the more uh, contracts that are awarded under that. And you'd have to look at each of these contracts to really understand, you know, are they IDIQs, uh, BPAs, what what are these actual um, contracts? Okay, and so some including remarks here, most of the work obviously is civilian, which uh, is vastly different from the first six contractors that we looked at who had towering numbers in the defense uh, contracts over their civilian contracts. And the civilian work seems to be growing. So, uh, but I would say that with um, just some caution because the growth could have stemmed simply from the pandemic. So again, keep an eye on fiscal year 2023 um, to start to make some um, data analysis and some predictions. Uh, the defense work primarily is in DLA, not a ton there, but um, you know, there's still you know, millions uh, within DOD. The subcontracting opportunities um, are really growing. And I think we saw um, that the opportunities, and I kind of almost want to go back to that slide um, where, bear with me here, folks. I think it's important to, um, to look at this, um, at least for uh, on the civilian side, we go from 6.8, I'm just looking at the sector totals here, the 6.8 to 6.6 .6 to 7 to 9.4. Um, so there is some, uh, some growth there uh, on the civilian side. Again, it could be related to COVID, but um, I would just keep an eye on that because it seems like um, they could be uh, potentially a good company to contract with if you are in fact in the same line of work as them and have something of value to bring to them. Um, also here, and I, I just don't want to read from the slides, but um, you can see that their business spiked during the pandemic, obviously due to medical manufacturing, but again, just look at the the past fiscal years and then just um, keep an eye on, on what's coming. And by signing up for Google Alerts and watching their stock price, this should be giving you some information about how the market is trending and what's happening um, in this sector within the federal government. Um, their company, uh, that company, Cielo, that showed up a couple of times is in fact in the recruiting business. The reason I uh, decided to highlight this is simply because Companies may be um, thinking, well, I don't provide medical services. I can't work with uh, McKesson. Well, uh, Cielo is not providing medical services. They have a, a medical slant to what they do. They're in the recruiting business and they work with various industries, including healthcare and life sciences, uh, which indicates that um, they do have that kind of healthcare component to what they do. So don't... Um, don't discredit your your product or service because it's not you're not providing you know you're not manufacturing pills or you're not manufacturing medical equipment, but you could be in a uh, complementary service to uh, to a company like this if in fact you do have a specialty that is focused on healthcare or life sciences. 
Okay, and these are just some headlines that we saw recently. Uh, they've been awarded a federal supply schedule, which means that they've got the VA schedule. VA schedules are different from GSA schedules. They're similar, but different, different because they are focused on medical services and medical products. Uh, we gave you some information just on the left-hand side, um, the second half of the, um, the screen there, is some more information about that DLA contract, uh, which was originated in uh, December of 2017 and looks like it runs through 2027. So um, there could be some, some homework and some sleuthing to do there. Um, their stock is on the rise, but um, as far as, uh, you know, uh, they're underperforming the market. Again, just stay abreast of these um, pieces of information so you can have um, intelligent conversations with the, your counterpart or, or people that you're trying to talk to at McKesson. Um, Brian Tyler is the CEO at McKesson, and this was an uh, interview that he did uh, earlier this month. Uh, he basically is kind of talking about how the opioid crisis that they were involved in um, and, and other companies as well. Um, impacted the company uh, and, and basically what they're kind of doing to turn things around. So again, stay abreast, know this information, not inside and out, but again, at high levels that you can have intelligent conversations and tailor your uh, capability statement to the folks at McKesson or whoever it is that you're uh, deciding to work with. That's all that we've got for today. We wanna to thank everybody for participating. And again, today's webinar has been recorded. Just sign up for our um, YouTube alerts and you'll, you'll get a note as soon as this is uploaded, which usually happens within 24 hours, um, usually more like in the next five or six hours, but um, please be patient with us and we'll get the, um, the PowerPoint uploaded to SlideShare as well. Uh, next week, uh, we're going to cover Lidos, uh, a name that I guess most people are probably familiar with, and the series again runs through November 15th. Uh, closing out the season with GlaxoSmithKline. The only week that we skip is uh, the week of July 4th. You can sign up for all the webinars. They are complimentary on our website. Under our website, just navigate over to the section, top 40. And that's it for today. Thanks everybody who joined us. We appreciate your time.